Alrighty folks, this is Lurch from Ireland Gaming and welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. I'm here with this little fella. Has anyone ever seen the movie Batteries Not Included? There's a little robot guy later on in the uh, the movie that has these two tiny little legs and I think this ship looks a lot like him. He's, he's absolutely adorable. This is, a, well, frankly it's a completely unnamed craft. I haven't got a name for it at all. Because the star of the show is not the ship, because frankly I've been fiddling with this for absolutely ages. I think it took me about 8 hours to get this ship to work correctly. And it's still rubbish. I don't like it, I'm not happy with it. I could do a lot, lot better. But, at the same time, I want to get a video out at some stage, so... Uh, despite all of my uh, time playing around with this thing, I'm going to show it off anyway. Now, like I say, the real star of the show isn't the ship, it's the weapon system. This thing is completely different to any cannon I have ever built before. The key point being, not because it's got a real gun, you know, I have actually built real guns despite what the videos might show. <laughs> um, these shells have absolutely zero gunpowder. None at all. Not a little teensy bit. No, we have a stabilizer fin, two flak warheads, and a bunch of HEs. These are 400 millimeter, or yeah, 400 millimeter shells. Do a bunch of damage, absolutely tons, and in here we have lovely, lots of lovely railgun bits. Uh, I will uh, build an exploded view of this ca uh, cannon on camera for you guys, so you can see what actually goes into it. But this is basically how it works. In this cannon, I have four four meter autoloaders attached to each side. Now there's two different cannons here obviously, two firing pins. Um, individually the cannons have four loaders each with a clip attached to each loader. We have just that, uh, two input feeders on each one and it's a max gauge cannon. I'm not sure if you can get away with seven for 400 mil but we have eight and uh, it's just built nicely into the hull here. There's actually still quite a bit of room left. The key factor about this type of cannon, notice there are no coolers, but there's four of these and the barrels are pointing straight down. Well, let's get something spawned in and I'll show you what it can do. Now, I'm going to turn the AIs off, I'm sorry, but uh, this thing, <laughs> I can't get it to not get blown out of the sky. It needs another rebuild. Uh, I think it needs a couple of shields to make it more effective. There's, I didn't put a big enough engine in at the start. It flies at about 50 meters per second, but it's uh, it's not terribly flashy. So uh, let's fast forward a little bit until we get to the target. Okay, we're coming up on the target. Remember, there's no gunpowder. Gunpowder dictates your cooldown time. And look at that. A whole bunch of shells just came out all at once, despite the fact that there were all 4 meter shells. Because there's no cooldown, you can basically make a cooldown shotgun without any of the coolers. The trouble is, the AI hasn't a clue how to fire it when it's got 0 meters per second speed, and you have to have enough speed coming out of the barrel for it to actually get to the target, even if gravity is there. It doesn't take gravity into account. So. We have to use a real gun, and in this thing, like I said, this thing's absolutely awful. In this thing, there are two fairly, fairly small real guns that allow it to fire very, very short range. I use three meter uh, elevation mantlets mounted sideways so that they can uh, sort of turn to the target easier whenever it can't uh, can't get close or can't fly directly overhead seems to be the best one I've found so far. I actually made a previous version of this using 8 meter loaders in the dev test branch. I was playing around with the new engines and stuff and I gotta say the new engines are actually really good for, for smaller craft. They're a lot more powerful at low end. It's just the higher end scaling that's been nerfed quite a bit. Um, but for the 8 meter loaders I was using a, an AA mantlet and I couldn't get it to work. Uh, you're obviously restricted from using 3x3 three three meter uh, mantlets because uh, you can't use real guns with them. They would be absolutely ideal for this. 
but that's okay. We're coming along for another pass. Let's get close. And there we go. Lovely. It's normally more accurate than this. Um, oh well. It's quite a big hole. But these shells do a bunch of damage. I'm sure you guys can do an awful lot better than me. The trouble with using such large shells is the actual infrastructure for it is enormous. You need so many shell parts. And this whole section at the front, we'll go into this. Look at the amount of shell parts in there. It's highly explosive. This is a big flying bomb. And that really is the problem with the overall ship design. It's not big enough. It needs to be a lot bigger. I've added loads of metal across the build. It hasn't got enough lift really either. So loads of problems with the actual build, but I am happy with the weapon system itself. It seems the best way to get these working correctly is to have at least maybe 40 or 50, well, 30 or 40 meters per second. Ah, no! Let me see it blowing up. Blast. Okay, that was more effective. <laughs> yeah, have at least 30 or 40 meters per second coming out of the barrel from the real gun. That seems to really, really help. But I'm going to now cut from here and go to a little test platform where I can show how these things are built. So I will be right back. Alright, so I have some of the basics started here. I don't have a really dumpy little barrel and I've got the 3, three meter AA mount mantlet. And this is just an advi uh, advanced firing pin mounted sideways. Now, incidentally, the way you can tell the bottom of the firing pin, the down direction, is this little flat bit here. These four bars. This here is the top with the little warning signs, and this is the bottom. But I think the warning signs, yeah, they're on the side too. So that's the bottom. It's a nice visual indicator. And you have to rotate it correctly, otherwise this won't rotate correctly. So let's dump on a load of gauge increasers. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I wonder can I get away with seven. I can get away with seven. Can I get away with six? I can get away with six. Okay, cool. That makes it a little bit smaller. But I do want my shell gauge to be exactly just just for, you know, what are you doing? There we go. Okay, so we now have a 400 millimeter cannon. Lovely. Let us put some loaders on. Uh, well, we can't use them. I'm not in the dev test at the minute. Uh, okay, symmetry. Yeah, I know. I'm going with more. I've got room. Stop complaining. Ammo clips. No, not 8 meters. Wrong way round. And now we need some input feeders. There's loads on this cannon, so... The reload time is going to be absolutely naff. Let's just assign all of these. And let's set up the shell. Uh, with uh, 400 meter loaders, you can actually get a five five meter shell in, like a five block shell. But I'm I'm going to stick with a three block just because, or a four block. Sorry. Now you can actually use a base bleeder here, and that does increase the speed that you get out of the real gun. I'm also going to use a fin because I'm using a really, really, really short barrel and it is like 20% accuracy increase is pretty damn good. Now where the hell is the fin? Stabilizer fin, there we go. And the rest can be lovely warheads. Let's go with two of these. And Hichi. I didn't actually have a base bleeder on the other ones. Forgot about them. Okay, so we've got a 3k damage out of the Hichi and a thousand out of the flak. That's lovely. I've recently started mixing warheads like this. It seems to be quite effective. Um, because of the diminishing returns, you're better off at least mixing a little bit of flak in. Maybe even a little bit of amp too, but I'm not sure just exactly how effective amps are at the minute. Okay, so you're set up. You're loading those lovely big shells and... Well, let's teleport over here and just <laughs> watch it fire. Reloading. Okay. I forgot this is the problem with having so many blasted loaders. 
put it in 1.93 31 seconds times 2. Okay, this is going to take ages. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I think this is ready to fire. So, let's give it a go. And... Oh. Didn't even go anywhere. See? Absolutely useless. So we do need the real gun. So let's put some real gun parts on. And we need, obviously, the barrel... No, not barrel magnet. The attachment fixture. Once that connected, and I'm only going to use two magnets, because uh, the more magnets you have, the more battery charge it uses every time it fires, and especially when something in an aircraft, which is probably the best sort of situation for using this, you really want as many... Um, you don't want to be using all your charge at once, because you're going to be firing a bunch of shells at the same time, so you kind of want to have as much... Uh, leftover charge there as possible. You, you kind of want to get as away with as little speed as you can. So... Just sort of trying to put this in such a way that I can attach a load of uh, recharger thingies. Because I'm on the platform rather than the... the aeroplane -y thing, I can actually get away with putting bloody loads of these in. Okay, so we'll set the overclock to maximum, and that'll at least get it filled up quickly. So, real gun charge use next shot, 2 to 80. Got 24k charge, it gives us 33 meters per second. I would say we want a little bit more speed than that. To get more speed out of a real gun, you need more batteries. Or more magnets, but I find the battery seems to be a better trade-off. Now, 39, let's see what an extra battery or a magnet will get us. 46, okay, but it's really drastically increased our amount of charge. Drop that again, it takes a thousand off the charge, but we only lose seven. Hmm. Arg. Screw it, more batteries. Okay, this is probably too much now. Yeah, you know what? 39's fine. Just as a demonstration. So... <laughs> it's pathetic little arc. But it works! And it's just emptied, like, all of those clips instantly. And that's the beauty of having zero cooldown. Uh, this... Um, I'm gonna show off the, the little ship bombing a few targets so you can get a rough idea what sort of damage it can do whenever I'm not faffing around and talking at the same time. So I'm going to leave you with a little montage showing it blowing the crap out of stuff. Like I say, the ship is bloody awful, so uh, the AI is going to all be turned off. It's going to be quite boring, but, you know, there's stuff to blow up. And everyone likes explosions, right? And let's be honest, these things, they give you some serious explosions.
that's a serious amount of DACA coming down in such a small amount of time, right? The problem with that ship, I think, is I'm trying to fire too big a shells, and uh, getting greedy with your calibers and using massive shells can be a real hindrance in this game, especially for something like a railgun that prefers to fire much smaller, much lighter projectiles. You can get away with a much, much smaller railgun that uses much less charge if you simply use a lower caliber shell, which is a fairly reasonable trade-off. I mean, I could switch these out for 2 meters or even 1 meter shells and keep the same caliber, get a hefty amount of damage, and only use, you know, a fraction of the charge whenever to get the same amount of velocity out of the shell. So, I really encourage you to play with this idea. This is a pretty cool concept. I'm sure a lot of people don't realize that you can actually even do this. Feel free to get rid of all of your gunpowder, say no to gunpowder, and bring out those real guns and see just what sort of interesting and creative uses you can have for them. Real guns aren't just sniper weapons and can be used as effective mortars. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. Any likes, subs or comments are really, really awesome. I love hearing from you guys and I read every single comment. As always, take it handy and have a bloody good day.